Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And I haven't made a baking business tips video specifically in a very long time. So in this one, we're going to be talking all about pre-sales and treat boxes and flash sales as well. Now this is definitely going to have a home baker focus as that was my background, but there might be some things you can implement in your storefront as well. And a little disclaimer, I am by no means a business major. All of my experience is based on anecdotal evidence. So tip number one, and this is probably the biggest, most important one, is make it easy on yourself. Treat boxes can be great money makers, but if you're going to make it really hard on yourself, then you're going to decrease those profit margins. So you need to come up with things that are very, very quick for you to do personally. I think sometimes we get caught up in looking at Instagram, and I think it definitely skews our own reality. For example, when I'm scrolling through and I'm looking for inspiration pictures and I see someone that has made thousands and thousands of macarons or cream puffs, for example, I know that I personally won't be able to make that happen in the facility that I have. So you really need to make sure that you're working on things that are going to work for your space and that are going to work for your technical level. I worked at a bakery in which they were actually trying to expand their product line and offer more things to people. And because it then became less focused on what we were good at and what we were trained at, I don't feel like we were maximizing on those profit margins. And then when the new owner took over, they actually took away all of those new products that we started trying to offer and they really just went right down to the bare minimum of cupcakes and cakes. And honestly, the business has really thrived because instead of trying to do a bunch of other different things that maybe we weren't so good at and that were difficult to produce in the facility, it was so much better to just kind of expand on the cake flavor on those cupcake flavors. And it also increased efficiency, which obviously is going to increase your profit margins. So don't feel like you have to offer seven different treats in one treat box. Offering maybe three or four different things, or you can also make the same thing but make them different flavors. This still provides your customer with enough variety. And the final thing I want to say about making it easy on yourself is I really suggest you don't try anything new. Make sure that you're selling things that are tried and true and maybe have a little bit of a spin on it, but not something that's going to be so difficult that you're not sure if you're going to be able to pull it off. The next thing you want to do is really make sure that you plan out your entire timeline. This is important because you're going to need to make sure that you have the correct amount of packaging and if you have to order anything online, you want to make sure that it's going to arrive on time. And if you're going to do something like a pre-sale, which I highly, highly recommend so that you at least have a minimum amount of numbers that you're going to sell, then I suggest that you launch that about two to three weeks in advance. Two weeks in advance is perfect from the customer standpoint because I find that it gives people enough time to plan and it's also close enough that they're not going to forget about the pre-order. And of course, the most important part of planning your timeline is making sure that you have enough time to actually bake and create all of your products. Now, one thing that I always love to include in any treat box are macarons. Now, there's a few different reasons for this. For me personally, I love the look of them. I think they give the box a little bit more luxury, especially if you really nail those interesting flavors. But most importantly, you can make these well in advance. They do better when you freeze them and let those shells mature. Cake pops are also a great one because inevitably you will have to freeze your cake pop before you can actually dip it and work with it and decorate it. So again, I know as bakers, especially when we're doing something from home, we want to make things really, really fresh. But those are two items that actually need to be frozen at some point. So they're really, really good choices and they'll probably help you out on making sure that you meet those timeline goals. Tip number three, perfect your photos. Now, a pertinent part of launching a pre-sale order is making sure that you have beautiful photos that are going to be so attention grabbing that people can't just scroll past. If they're in the area, they're going to want to order your pre-sale based on your photos alone. So I'm by no means a photography expert. However, creating really great photos is part of being a content creator. So I feel like over the years, I've made some improvements. Now, don't feel like you have to go out and get the best camera out there. Anything that has really great focus and that does well in natural light, which is most cameras, is going to work just fine. 
Now, when it comes to taking specific product photos, you really don't want to make this look too full with a really busy background, and you also don't want to add in too many props. You want to be really, really clear about what it is that your customer is going to be receiving. Now you can do this a few ways and obviously you want to let that creativity flow a little bit. However, I really like it when there's at least one overhead shot so you can see all of the treats and some sort of side shot where maybe some of those treats are a little bit blurred out but for the most part you're still understanding what you're getting in that treat box. Now what you really need to make sure is that you're actually including every single thing that you're going to put in that treat box. You showcase every single flavor and also really important that you do not veer away from the photograph when you actually make your treat boxes. Now this is from experience where I've seen that even if the slightest bit different shade is used, for example, on a pink cupcake, this can cause problems. So you want to try and make sure that you nail it as closely to the photo as possible. You never know why somebody is purchasing your particular treat box. They could be purchasing it because all of the treats really fall under the color pattern that they're looking for for a particular event. You never know. But this does bring me to my next point, disclaimers. Now I know I said that you should try to make your stuff as close to the photograph that you provided as possible, however, you can give yourself some leeway as well. You could write a little asterisk that says, all products may not look exactly like this photo, or product flavors are subject to change upon availability. It really is up to you how many disclaimers that you want to put in there. But keep in mind that the more disclaimers that you put in there, the less control you're giving the customer on what you're actually offering. Some people might not like that. So if you want to have repeat customers, and personally, I would want to go to a bakery or any facility that is going to offer me exactly what is shown. Now moving along to tip number five, the best ways to launch. So I know we've talked a lot about pre-sales and some of you might be wondering, well, what exactly is a pre-sale? So a pre-sale means that you're basically paying everything up front and then later on in two weeks when all of the pre-sales go out, you will receive your product. And I think the best way for home bakers and even bakery storefronts to get the word out about your pre-sale is to use social media. I know some people get really down and discouraged when they feel that they have to do this whole social media thing. It might not be something you're super comfortable with. The thing about social media is it takes a lot of consistency. And if you don't have that consistency, it really is hard to get the word out there. So you can always do something like boost a post. Now, I always recommend against boosting posts to try and get more followers because I just feel like it doesn't always happen super organically then. However, when it comes to something like you're actually selling a product and you want to make sure that people know about it, especially in your local area, then I think boosting a post is a great way to do that. And you can boost posts on Facebook or on Instagram. I find that Instagram is where more people are right now and that could be a geographical thing, but in my area and Vancouver, Vancouver, Canada, I just feel like I see a lot of these types of pre-sales on Instagram. And moving along to my next tip, well, why exactly do we do all this? Well, it's because we want to get paid for most of us. So I'm going to be talking about a few different things, particularly in this segment. The first thing is you want to make sure that everything is paid in full prior to pickup. So as soon as they place that order, you have to make sure that they've paid it all in full or else the order just doesn't get put through and that needs to be made very clear right off the bat. That way, if they don't show up to pick up their order, it's all good. It's not like you've lost anything and everything is covered. The next thing is you want to make sure that you offer different tiers of treat boxes. Now it could just be two tiers, but you want to give people that option that maybe want to buy on the lower end and maybe some that want to buy on the more upper end. And you want to make sure that you are pricing everything out properly. Now, if you're running a home baking business, this is where things differ from a storefront. As a home baker, I'm sure that you implement a lot of minimums. This is the opportunity to get your product at 
no minimum. You're providing a variety without them having to reach a minimum order of each thing. So this in and of itself is actually adding more value to the individual treats in your treat boxes. Adding a dollar to a dollar fifty more per product that's offered in your treat box is not actually unreasonable because they would have never been able to order all of those different things without reaching a minimum. Minimums are in place so that you can continue to make a profit. Now, if you're running a bakery storefront, this could also be the case if you're offering something very, very specialized that your bakery normally doesn't offer. And this brings me to my final point, packaging. And packaging is super important. It might almost be the most important thing in this whole entire list. And I know that might sound a little bit silly, but I think about the people that are buying treat boxes and why are they buying them? Very rarely is somebody buying a treat box for themselves, though of course we all want to indulge every now and again, but more than likely it's for a gift or for a special occasion. And nothing is worse for people than when they look at a spectacular dessert and then wonder, how am I supposed to get this home in one piece without damaging it. So that's one aspect of packaging that's really important. You want to make sure that all of those baked goods are safely in place. The other thing is though, you really want to make sure that the packaging is very attractive. I know as a consumer myself that I would love to quickly pick something up that looks cohesive, but also looks full enough to give to somebody. So it really is important that you think about your packaging. Now let's say that you actually made a bunch more product and you have a whole bunch of treat boxes that are just on hand that need to go out for a quick sale. You can do something like a flash sale. Putting it in your Instagram stories is a great way to do that. You can sell it to family and friends on your Facebook. I don't really recommend flash sales for smaller social media followings and for businesses that are a home-based baking business that really can't operate at the same levels as bakery storefronts. However, it can be done and sometimes it is very successful. For example, I am sure if you launched a flash sale near Valentine's Day, you're probably going to be successful in that because there's a lot of people that scramble at the very end when it comes to things like this. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys and have a very happy Valentine's Day. Bye!